Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kim. Tonight's video is going to feature some things that I learned how to cook and bake 40 years ago. 40 years ago I was a home health aide taking care of a 96 year old grandma who taught me how to make my own salad dressing, beef stroganoff, banana bread, which I make into banana muffins, and lasagna. So uh, tonight's video is going to feature those four things. It's very uh, economical cooking. Uh, the ingredients aren't a lot. It takes 30 minutes or under to make each one of these dishes. The muffins you'll have leftovers, the lasagna, depending on your family size, you'll have leftovers. I know we get four meals out of the lasagna, making each serving about $1.75. So we save a lot of money by making homemade salad dressing. And in lieu of cereal, which is very expensive and most of it is crap, and milk, which is very expensive. I like making these banana muffins, and we grab one of those with some juice for breakfast, and it saves us a lot of money. So I was thinking this last week about how things were so different, uh, cooking from scratch and making everything homemade. Uh, Forty years ago, Grandma didn't even realize some of the modern things that were about to come out, like TV dinners or whatever. Yeah, I think they had already come out by that time, but she hadn't been shopping in the store for years, so had no idea there was such a thing as TV dinners where you could just go buy something in a cardboard box and microwave it up. She taught me just, you know, the basics of how to make... Um, uh, boiled potatoes and carrots and stuff, things that I didn't learn when I was growing up because my mom didn't like us in the kitchen. So I was very grateful to learn that at 19, and I've been uh, using those skills ever since for 40 years. I've made uh, a lot of our meals from scratch, done a lot of baking, a lot of homemade food, and uh, for myself, for my family, and for other people, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. So I hope you enjoy this video, and if someone taught you how to cook when you were young and you're still using some of those skills or um, using those recipes uh, and making those dishes for your family, please leave that type of information in the show notes or in the comments. I'd love to read about it. I hope you're all well, and I'll see you back here next week. Okay, I am about to make banana muffins. I'm following Sally's Baking Addiction dot com slash banana dash muffins slash recipe at Sally's Baking Addiction dot com site. These are for banana muffins. I will uh, read the ingredients. Uh, some are offered in American measurements and others those that use grams. So one and a half cups or 188 grams of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of baking soda, a half a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a quarter of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, one and a half cups or 345 grams of mashed bananas, calls for either four medium or three large ripe bananas, six tablespoons or 85 grams of unsalted butter, two-thirds cup or 135 grams of packed light or dark brown sugar. You can use coconut sugar, one large egg at room temperature, one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, two tablespoons of two tablespoons or 30 milliliters of milk. Optional, you can do walnuts, pecans, or chocolate chips. So I'm going to get started, and as I add the ingredients, I'll show you what I've got. Okay, I'm ready to mix all of the wet ingredients. Okay, I have mixed the wet ingredients. You don't have to worry about having the butter is not completely melted or anything. I really actually don't ever melt butter for any recipes because I've noticed that, that it just some for some reason the recipe just doesn't turn out. This is going to turn out... Um, just perfectly fine. It's just that my butter wasn't as soft as it could have been, though the recipe just calls for six tablespoons of unsalted butter, and it does actually call for melted. Now that I look closer, I don't, like I said, I don't melt anything, so this is going to be perfectly fine. Okay, and there are my muffins in my 12-count muffin pan. Like I said, it's silicone, but then it has this hard um, metal, so it's Basically got metal all the way around the, the sides so when you pick it up. It's not some flimsy silicone because I don't like that at all. So the recipe says that it makes a 12 count. Um, I kind of overfill my muffins. If you just wanted like a banana bite, you could underfill like this and then uh, with the batter that's left to just overfill a couple of the other ones and stuff like that because this one right here is going to have a muffin top on it. I can tell that and so is this one right here. So... The rest of them are pretty, going to be pretty uniform in size. Uh, you preheat an oven to 425, and 
Let's see, how long do they bake? Bake for um, five minutes at 425, and then keeping them in the oven, reduce the temperature to 350 for an additional 16 to 18 minutes. So 425 in a preheated oven of 425 for five minutes, and then reduce it down to 350 or 177 degrees Celsius for an additional 16 to 18 minutes. So let's do that and see what they look like. And here are the banana nut muffins. So these are the ones that I kind of think are kind of like a, just a little banana bite. So that would just be filling the muffin tin up halfway. Those are kind of neat, just pop one. My husband and I just eat one serve, you know, one per snack or uh, meal. And so, and then they're oh, very spongy, very nice. Fabulous taste, fabulous color. I don't know if it picks up right with the with the camera for the video, but just uh, like I said, the ones that were uh, that I took out some of the mixture uh, to make the smaller bites do have kind of like they kind of explode on the side, which is fine. But I mean, these are absolutely delicious. And we just keep them like this. I don't think that we would, um, personally, we would never add the nuts or the chocolate chips, but yeah, that would be a nice sweet treat too if you decided to add something like that. All total with the cooking minutes is 20 minutes and putting everything together takes about 10. It's a 30 minute recipe. You're just using six tablespoons of butter, so I mean, it, it doesn't take a lot. Only two-thirds cup of brown sugar, only one egg. So I think that it's all around a very um, quick and easy and inexpensive way to take your bananas that are past uh, ripe. In my case, they were close, but not quite. I liked when I froze the bananas, and then it was just basically like a black banana um, mixture that I put in and I knew that the, that I had started with three large uh, bananas before I froze them so and that was that worked perfectly fine as well as just taking them off the table and smashing them up in a bowl so I enjoy this recipe I hope you do too okay and today I'm going to make some old-fashioned cucumber salads so we've got an English cucumber and an onion you're going to skin the in English cucumber and then slice it up thinly and add onion to it and then I'm going to make my homemade dressing. Okay, here is my cucumber salad and here is the onion that I would put in it if I was able to eat onion. But this onion will live its best life as a fried onion for my husband's beef stroganoff. Everything that's in tonight's video I learned from the grandma that I took care of in home health care from the time I was 19 till I was 23. She taught me how to make this dressing because obviously when she was a young lady or a housewife, mother, young wife and mother, there was no such thing as salad dressings in grocery stores. Obviously there was onions and cucumbers and all things to be had to make salads from and people wanted dressings on them. So she taught me how to make this and this was made with, you can use Miracle Whip or in my case I use Hellman's. For two salads, tonight's just going to be cucumber salad. Tomorrow night I'm going to put it on um, uh, boiled potatoes. That She also taught me how to eat it like that. So I use a between an eighth of a cup and a quarter of a cup of salad dressing, two tablespoons of milk, and salt and pepper. You can add a um, couple of teaspoons, a teaspoon to a couple of teaspoons of vinegar if you want it kind of um, have a tang to it. Or you can use just a shaker or, you know, half a teaspoon, teaspoon of sugar to make it a little sweeter. Um, she also would use it with uh, sliced or uh, chunked up tomatoes, cucumbers, and then what I'm going to do with it tomorrow is whatever's left over. And it'll be a little bit thinner, of course, when it stays in the refrigerator overnight. Water will seep out of the cucumbers and it'll be a little thinner, the, the, the dressing. I'm going to boil potatoes with our roasted chicken, and then I'm just going to... Uh, Take a spoonful of it and put it over the top of the boiled potatoes. She taught me how to do that, and I just love the taste of boiled potatoes and the salad dressing and the cucumbers. So that's why I've decided to make a video of everything. Well, not everything. Three of the things that she taught me how to make. Uh, when I left home and that, my sister and I were not allowed in the kitchen when we were growing up. My mother just wouldn't have any, any part of it. So neither one of us knew how to cook when we left home. 
Thankfully, I did the home health care at 19 until I was 23, and I learned a lot about cooking and canning, preserving, uh, uh, growing a garden and stuff like that, and even baking. So the muffins, obviously, she didn't make banana muffins. She made banana bread. When I took care of her, she taught me how to make banana bread, pumpkin bread, uh, zucchini bread, and then this salad and lasagna. I'd never had lasagna until I was 19 years old, and um, beef stroganoff. Now, when I was growing up, uh, the area I grew up was in Minnesota, so we called them hot dishes. You may call them casseroles. Um, and this is, of course, beef stroganoff with just kind of something altogether different. But she was from Germany, and this was something that maybe is from Germany. I'm not really sure, but we used to have this on a regular basis with green beans. And then, of course, as I got older, um, a lot of people that I saw had a dish similar to this called green bean casserole. So um, you're going to see the, the beef stroganoff, the lasagna, the cucumber salad, and the banana muffins in uh, tonight's video, all learned from Grandma. This is kind of what it looks like. It's nice and creamy. You can thin it out if you want to add more milk or half and half. I said add vinegar if you want a little tang to it. Add sugar if you want it to be sweeter. So tonight I'm going to have cucumber salad. And here I am working on the beef stroganoff. So you got your ground beef, and I have my marjoram and salt and pepper the sour cream, add a little more because I want it a little creamier. I have that fried onion. You want a nice creamy sauce. That's what I'm aiming for. I've added the beef broth. You don't want anything to be really curdled. I did strain the ground beef, but there is still a little bit of grease in there. I've tried and tried. I am trying to get it out a little bit at a time with a spoon because I don't really like the look of it or and I don't think my husband will probably mind the taste of it but I'd rather it just be a very nice dish. Uh, when we were first married he had hamburger helper beef stroganoff on a regular basis and uh, never really uh, made it again. We used to eat separate meals. Everything that he grew up on, he used to eat, and everything I grew up on and liked, I used to eat. So separate meals for the first few years of our marriage. And then we started just deciding, let's eat meals that we both enjoy. I don't enjoy this type of a dish, but definitely learned how to make it homemade and made it for others. So I've decided to make it for him homemade 30 years after we got married, and so here it is. So I'm hoping that the cream kind of uh, works its way into the ground beef. I'm going to make the egg noodles here in a minute. And then when it's all ready to put together, I will show you what it looks like. Okay, and the beef stroganoff is done. So I added the noodles, and my husband tasted it, and he said it's perfect. So um, I will have the recipe in the show notes if you care to make this. Some may ask why I didn't make it sooner. Well, you know, when I first got married in that, I worked about 65 hours a week, and there just was no time to make things from scratch. And then as the years went by, when we decided to eat more meals that um, we both liked, this kind of went off the menu. But it's time now to make something like this and show him how to make it so that he can make one of his favorite dishes. And uh, so that is the video with all the meals that, well, not all the meals again, but some of the meals that Grandma taught me how to make when I was 19 years old. Okay, and one of the last meals that I'm cooking and featuring in this video is lasagna. Now, when I learned how to make it 40 years ago, Grandma used cottage cheese. I don't even know if ricotta would have been available in grocery stores around here. Um, I'm just not sure. Or around where I was at, which was in Minnesota by Rochester. Um, I have no idea. But I do know she used cottage cheese. Um, she lived on a farm, born on the born on the farm, married on the farm, had all of her ten children on that farm, and then uh, passed away um, after being sick for a long time at 96. So uh, they had milk cows, they had goats. She may have even used, I'm pretty sure she did, used her own milk in that, and uh, knew how to make homemade cottage cheese. But when I took care of her, we used to go to the grocery store and buy cottage cheese for a recipe. So just the lasagna noodles, which she used um, cottage cheese, and then the meat sauce. And then we would shred mozzarella cheese. She would always like to slice down the mozzarella before I would put it um, across the, the uh, cheese grinder. I don't know if that was something 
not really sure that she felt it made it easier. It had made it easier in her time. And then, across here, and then we have the ricotta. I'm trying, I'm going to blend it to try to see if I can make it a lot smoother than it usually is. So she had the cottage cheese. I use ricotta because that's my preference. And then there's some Parmesan shreds and um, two eggs. So I'm going to uh, get this uh, blended up really nice and smooth, and then I'm going to put it all together. Okay, here's what the lasagna looks like as it's ready to be wrapped up, put in the refrigerator, and then baked off later. I use 12 lasagna noodles, and I cook them till they're al dente. Uh, some spaghetti sauce, about a jar of spaghetti sauce, a little water added. I had one pound of ground beef, and then some parsley uh, flakes, salt, and pepper. When I make the ricotta, I take the ricotta and blend it in a mixer with two eggs, and it makes this pan, which I think is a 9 by 13 pan, I believe. Um, and so then for us, that's going to be three different meals. We'll eat one meal where we'll eat two and a half pieces, and then I'll freeze the rest, and that'll either be two or three more meals later. Um, when Grandma taught me how to make it, like I said, I used cottage cheese, and then she was always looking through like her tomato juice and stuff like that, and we'd have a tomato puree, or sometimes she'd just take regular tomatoes and smash them up. Even, even one time I remember she ta told me just to do it with the skins on, so I didn't care for it that way. But she was always about using up whatever extras that were in the refrigerator. I don't know that we used mozzarella cheese when she made it. Now that's 40 years ago, but I, I know that we used Parmesan cheese. I just don't know if we had the stringy cheese on top. But hers was always very rustic and very good, and over the years, I, uh, for a while there, I couldn't make it at all. It would just be uh, either I would burn around the edges or it would be very dry. So I would encourage, if you're going to use a spaghetti sauce, that's not enough liquid. I would definitely add at least three-quarters of a cup of water to your spaghetti sauce because the noodles are going to absorb the spaghetti sauce, and you don't want a dry piece of lasagna, but rather a real nice, juicy uh, piece of lasagna that actually holds together. So... That's it for tonight's video. Thanks for stopping, and I'll see you again next week.